We're in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm looking at one of the most beautiful gardens that I've seen in a long time. Lisa, tell me, tell me what you have going on here. Well, I was really excited to create a bee garden. Um, and you can see, because we've got all different kinds of bees that they're really excited about it. So we have several colors of Monarda and Cardoon, and I wanted it to be purples, reds, and fuchsia. And I think, and I think that's a good point that you bring up. Most people would not put this combination together. Mm -hmm. And I think it works really, really well. I think it might be the silver pulling off everything else that pulls it all together. You know, bees like bright colors. Correct. Um, so I, I chose the three brightest colors that I thought the color palette that went together. Oh, look at all the different kinds. I it's saw just that, so fun. Yeah. But um, I also love prehistoric looking plants, and I thought that the cardoon, the silvery splashes, and the dramatic leaf structure would just be pretty with. It makes a beautiful bloom that's similar to an artichoke, it is related. Mm -hmm. But if you cut that off, I actually have cardoon uh, in other parts of the yard that has existed for, you know, six or seven years. As long as you take the bloom before it develops, then it will continue. So like most herbs, if you let it go to seed or flower, then it stresses the other plant because it's working on just creating that beautiful flower, correct? Exactly. Okay, exactly. all right. But then the traditional bee balm, as everyone knows it, is beautiful. And I have to say those blooms are quite large. And then you've got them edged nicely here for a little detail of, of your boxwood. Thank you. And what do you have down here? Sunny border blue, Veronica. Okay. Veronica, yeah. yes. And then you've carried on the purple throughout this garden through here and it looks great because you've edged it, which kind of makes it look nice and compact. Thank I you. Think, with the boxwoods. Yes. The ruby glow anise again adds some wonderful red. Lisa, in this cute little vignette here, you've got something growing that I'm not familiar with and I want to share it. Tell us about it. Oh, well, this is a variegated acanthus. Uh, the variety is called Whitewater. Um, and it's just really un interesting. It's unusual, it's hard to find. Um, when the leaves first emerge, they're very white though. Sometimes I give it a little bit of shade until it begins its variegation. But just a, another prehistoric plant. It's clear that's a theme in my garden, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> but they're cool. And, and then you've got a wonderfully large pot with a spiral boxwood in there. Do you train that yourself? You know, I did. Um, lots of fun. Dave and I kind of like to trim and train things over the years and it's kind of fun. <laughs> and then you have beautiful lavender coming. And I notice in most of your gardens you are edged and bordered with boxwood. Is that a favorite thing of yours? You just like the English garden look? <laughs> I don't know as much as the English garden as I really like the structure of boxwood and then how you can tell unstructured I am a lot of times mm -hmm. in my beds. I kind of let things, if they play happy together, I let them be together. And so sometimes it's a little crazy looking. Lisa, I like what you've done here. Explain to us, please. Oh, thank you. Well, uh, this is a contorted filbert, and the nature of it is the foliage is all the way to the ground. But I appreciate the branching structure, so I remove the leaves. First of all, that I can see out the window. I have a wonderful light that casts the shadows at night. I, I really like what it leaves me with. And then, of course, we've got the uh, Chinese ginger under and all kinds of little ferns. It looks like a little fairyland to me. It's very cute, very cute. Back to the prehistoric again, my little, uh, I think succulents, again, look like they could have lived long ago. My little prehistoric garden. Lisa, I love your containers here. Tell me briefly about these. Thank you. These are foie bras that are hand painted from a single piece of limestone, uh, most of them in the early to mid 1800s. And again, the prehistoric look of all the, the variety of succulents, just mixing color and texture. The end of the hot summer, these will, this will just be filled and gorgeous. I just like the look. And I gotta say, this is so cool. Thank you so much. Well, and you braided this yourself? Wait, you know, it's just fun to try different things. So they can grow all straight, but thought that might so be this is what it looks like before you've trained it, correct? Before you've braided it, this new little baby here? Exactly. Something to aspire to, I guess. Yeah. I love your meandering border perennials back here. Let's talk a little bit about this. Thank you. In the forefront, we have Creeping, Creeping Jenny. Jenny, which some don't like, but you know it's such a beautiful contrasting color to everything else. Yeah, it's certainly a bang for your buck, is not it? And it keeps the weeds out as well. <laughs> and then what's right behind it there? Well, it's one of the many epimediums or barren wart. Um, I think there's 44 now, and uh, we have 31 of them in the garden. They're not really blooming now, but I still 
think they add architectural interest. I love the heart-shaped leaf. And of course, when they're putting off their orchid-like blooms, they're just incredible. And this right here, you also think this looks prehistoric? Yeah, that's uh, Euphorbia ascot rainbow. Um, again, a beautiful um, foliage, but the flower is also pretty spectacular. Lisa, let's talk about this prehistoric plant. Yes, this is an acanthus, of course, related to the white water you saw in the back, and it's in bloom. Uh, mustn't touch, though, it's awfully sticky. And then we have Ligularia, and this is Othello. I absolutely love the beautiful fan and the red underneath. It's just a lot of bang for your buck and produces a beautiful canary yellow bloom a couple of times a year. This is Ascot Rainbow again, but bloomed, and I just, you know, how can you not appreciate the gorgeous foliage and how it's perfectly variegated through the middle with that beautiful little yellow, uh, red flower and then the seed pods on the end. I mean, it's just exquisite. I'm impressed. I mean, you have really textbook borders as far as your oak leaf hydrangeas, how you've got the tall blocking your neighbors and your fence row, and then you go to the medium and you go to the low in front and then you go to the creeping. I just think it's spectacular. Oh, thank you so much. And we have another wart, Lisa. What kind is this one? Ah, oh, this is lungwort. Not many people want to grow it. I don't think the foliage is especially pretty. Sometimes, I, or excuse me, the flowers are especially pretty. Sometimes I pick them off, but I just love the foliage. I just think it's fabulous and what a great name. That would be great in cut flower arrangements as well, just because of the variegation. Oh, good idea. You know, we've coined the phrase prehistoric plants, are really not, but let's <laughs> talk about this one right here. What is this? I just think it's the most incredible euphorbia. Some people call it a cranial euphorbia or an upright euphorbia, and it's just really special, and I have two of them. Well, it is spectacular. One of my favorite cedars, Lisa, Blue Atlas. How long has that been there? Uh, this has been here for 17 years, underplanted by all kinds of uh, sedum and then mostly thyme. This is a constantly changing thyme bed because as you know, some grow more aggressively than others. And Well, let's talk about that for a yeah. second because not everybody realizes they think they can just plant thyme and it will just mingle and get along with each other, but it doesn't. Oh no, oh no. And so I'm constantly, you know, when someone offends someone else, I'm moving him around and, and uh, I don't let anyone take too much space. But as you can see, sometimes they take advantage before you get to them. But I like to continue to add other colors and textures upright and low growing for interest. And let's talk about your different heights of your boxwoods here. Well, this is a collection of miniature boxwoods that actually have also been here 17 years. And um, I have not begun clouding these yet because they're just not large enough. And I've just begun clouding these. But yes, all different varieties, uh, some of them more rare than others. And just, again, architectural interest. Lisa, thank you to you and your husband. You have done such a wonderful job, magnificent, actually. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.